Archive Dive highlights the people behind the collections on view at texasarchive.org. With support from Humanities Texas, we will chat with contributors about their materials and discover more information about those videos and the Texans who made them. Tonight, we are watching segments from Scope with Viet Nguyen and Rob Thomas. Scope was a 1990s news program made by Viet and other students for a class taught by Rob at Austin's Reagan High School, which is now Northeast Early College High School. Our viewers, however, might be more familiar with our guests from their major production credits. Viet Nguyen is the director of the 2015 film Crush the Skull, as well as episodes of major television series like The Flash, Chilling Adventures of Sabrina and Lucifer. And Rob Thomas is the creator, writer, and executive producer of the television series Veronica Mars, Party Down, and I Zombie. Viet reunited with his former teacher on both Party Down and I Zombie. He also directed the Veronica Mars spinoff web series Play It Again Dick and the 2014 documentary by the fans, The Making of the Veronica Mars Movie, both executive produced by Rob. Who you guys have a lot of credits to get through. But we are talking to Viet and Rob via Zoom. Good evening, gentlemen. Catherine, hey, I just want to so say that was amazing for the first time you've ever read that before. So Beautiful. I know, <laughs> right off the cuff. But thank you so much for joining us. Out of all the products you both have worked on, I don't imagine either of you gets asked about scope particularly often. <laughs> Not real often. No. No. <laughs> no. It's right up there. You, you don't get questions about scope at Comic Con or anything. Or... <laughs> I, I, I occasionally uh, gotten questions about how did I meet Viet, in which case right. scope gets mentioned. Right. But uh, rarely, rarely at Comic Con does someone bring up. Yeah. Scope. We need, I, I we need, need to put it on IMDb. Needs to we do. get we it do. on. <laughs> but uh, speaking of, if anyone from the audience has questions for either Viet or Rob during our conversation, Team Tammy is monitoring the comment section. And scope broadcasts were among the materials Viet shared with Tammy for the Texas Film Roundup in 2013 and 2015. And we'll just start off before we get watching. What is the story behind Scope? Was it something that you started at Reagan, Rob, or was it there before you got there? Uh, it was not there before I got there. Um, Channel One, uh, which is this company that would do 12-minute newscasts that they would uh, broadcast in, in schools across the country, uh, came to Reagan High School, and they put in a closed-circuit TV system, which made it possible to do it. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's, that's where we got the idea to do a broadcast journalism class. And then, you know, two VCRs and uh, a camcorder later, um, we, we were up and running. Yeah, and I, I don't know if you remember this, Rob, but um, so basically, from what, I, from what I remember, you actually ordered a bunch of equipment based off of whatever someone recommended you buy. Uh, yes. And so we had like a certain amount of funding that was given to us, and then you ordered a bunch of cameras and VCRs and all this shit. And then... Um, so, you know, first day of class, we were all sitting together and there was just, they were all in their boxes still. And you had pulled out all the manuals and made photocopies of all the manuals. I don't know if you remember any of this. I remember this because you said, you pass them off to every single student and you said, I don't know how to use any of this, but let's go home, read, read the manuals over the weekend and figure out how to do this on Monday. <laughs> and then, you know, you talked about writing and all stuff. And then you show, and then we show up on Monday and you're like, all right, who, who read the manual? And I was like the one nerd that read all the manuals. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I had already done a, a little bit of video and shot a mm -hmm. bunch of stuff. So I kind of, I remember just kind of helping lead the charge on the on the technical aspect of it because I, I was that one kid that, you know, had the video camera already and it was already shooting a, a little bit of video. So this was just kind of like a step up from all that. You were, making, anyway, yourself, you were making yourself essential to the team. <laughs> that is like a critical, a critical role. But how did you end up with the recordings, Viet? Like, did you intentionally save broadcasts on VHS tape at the time? Oh, yeah. So, I, you know, um, you know, I don't remember, Rob, but, well, oh, actually, I do remember. So we actually, we, did, we weren't able to always do it live, actually. We would always just tape it, on, and, and, and then I would have to edit all together because we didn't have the capability of, like, you know, rolling a t you know, rolling live and then pushing a tape and, you know, pushing play and all that stuff. So I actually would, we would record everything the morning of, and then we would just piece it together that, and then later on, we'd just push play and then broadcast it um, uh, to, to the, to the school and everything. And then I think there was one time that we actually did do it live. Yeah, and it was we like, did do it live. Yeah. 
Yeah, and it was, it was super shaky, scary. But we made it yeah. through it. Yeah, it was super scary. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we I mean all the all the episodes uh were recorded. Um and I think I have them somewhere. I remember going into the school and stealing all the tapes because I didn't mm -hmm. trust that they would be preserved otherwise. So I think I have all the episodes somewhere. That's great. Because I think yeah, most of the ones that you came from came from two VHS tapes that just have multiple episodes on one. Oh, tape. okay, yeah. But, yeah, but, and so there they, we go. to understand the editing that was going on in there, I mean, it really was just um, using two VCRs to to record back and forth. We had no fancy, we had no mm -hmm. computer editing. It was, mm -hmm. and there was always like a lag time in, I remember in starting to record, like it was like a second and a half after you press record. And so to do all the editing, and really I didn't have my hands in the technical aspect of this much, but it was it was mind blowing to like, see the things that the kids could put together with mm -hmm. two VCRs just recording back and forth. That's incredible. Well, that's why you need yeah. to, to read all the manuals. Yeah, well, I mean, and it, it, it's exactly that, Rob. I mean, if you wanted to, you know, just like piece together just like one sound bite, you have to push record one point, I, by the way, it was 1.7 ish from what I remember, <laughs> but it was like 1.7 seconds before that they're supposed to say it. And then, you know, it kicks in and then you go back and watch it and make sure that it, you know, the timing was right. And then you go to the next clip. So it was like linear editing at its very worst. And it was just like, and so, um, but it, you know, what's funny is that I, I just, I texted on the other, like a month ago and you had, so Rob, you had actually bought like this, um, this like splicer thingy where you push the end point and an out point and it reads the time code on a tape and stuff. And it just, it was always off. And that's why we ended up having to just push play and record. But then years later, I, I remember, you know, actually you can program an <laughs> offset on the machine so that you can actually be accurate. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But those are things I just didn't realize. And, and I, I texted Onlo randomly about that. I was like, I don't know if you've ever thought about this, but, you know, we could have used that, <laughs> that thing and been more precise. But you made anyway. it work. You made it work. You made it work. But we're going to begin tonight's screening with a selection of the show's playful opening sequences. Let's roll the clip. Hi, everyone. I'm Lisa Ling with Yet. Welcome to Scope. include my favorite mm. sequence which recreates the star wars opening crawl <laughs> so we didn't want to we didn't want to get flagged by youtube for music copyright mm -hmm. um, but the ones we did see offer one i think a real good taste of the playful tone and creativity of the show mm -hmm. so walk me through how an episode was made like what was the timeline from start to finish you guys were talking about you know you sort of record it the morning of no well yeah but you know rob uh, rob was i mean you know by the way rob was like that you know, the cool teacher that everybody wanted. Mm -hmm. But um, he, I mean, I remember like one, one of the first things that we did in that, that class is you actually invited actual journalists like from local TV to come and talk to our class. And I don't oh, know cool. how you got them to say yes, mm -hmm. but they would just show up to our <laughs> school and talk to like a, you know, uh, what, like seven of us or eight of us, a class of eight or nine. And I remember like Rob, and you know, tell me if you remember all this, but you know, they, one local journalist she comes in and she's like okay so what we would do is we would what we put together what you call a package and a package is one story and i remember she would explain all this and rob's over here taking notes and he's like okay this is what we're gonna do and then like he just like basically adopted all of those things into our class so it's like okay what's our package you know we're gonna have three packages a, a, an episode or whatever it is and 
and he would assign it on a Monday and then we'd go off and shoot it and everything and edit it. And then I think, I don't remember what days we broadcast. Actually, you know what? I think we were super ambitious. It was like every Tuesdays and Thursdays or something crazy like that's, that. That's, ex that's exactly what I was remembering was Tuesdays and Thursdays. Yeah. So then we'd go off and shoot all this stuff and then we would, you know, cram it all together probably, you know, you know, Tuesday morning right before we, we air and we shoot all of our hosting stuff. I edited it together. And then, you know, by the time second period is around, we'd push play and, and, and mm -hmm. then we'd start all over again. Mm -hmm. How much were you guys doing in class versus outside of class? Well, let me, let me tell you a little bit about them shooting packages outside yeah. of class. Because famously, and this is something that has haunted me uh, in the 30 years since, or uh, however long it's been, is that I sent them to Waco to cover the Branch Davidian. We're, we're gonna up. watch. We're gonna watch that later, Rob. So hold on to that. <laughs> okay, is that is that the showstopper? Because yeah, that's um, that's a little hard to believe nowadays. Yeah, that, that, is, that, uh, somehow that that was endorsed by a faculty member, yeah. a very young faculty member. <laughs> I should have. Yeah. Well, to answer your question, we we spent. I mean, yes, I mean, our class is only an hour long, I think, yeah. but we we spent a lot. I mean, you know, I basically quit tennis and did, you know, basically <laughs> quit all my extracurricular activities and just did this. And it was, it just, it consumed our lives. And we shot all the time. We'd go around the school. We, I mean, I, I got pulled in, uh, the assistant principal sat me down and talked about my, my uh, attendance problem. I had a bad attendance <laughs> problem. And he's like, I don't know what to do because... I know what you're doing. He's like, I see you walking around shooting, using your camera and doing all this stuff, but you're not going to class either. So I don't know what I'm supposed to tell you. I, I you know, and, and, and so, yeah, I mean, you know, all that stuff takes a lot of time and uh, that's all we were doing. Mm -hmm. When, you know, and Rob and Rob only, Rob ended up leaving and, you know, moving to Hollywood and me coming all Hollywood and stuff. But we had a the following year, we, we, the, the, the rules were even more lax and we were actually just spending the night in the, in the room wow. the following year. And we were literally by ourselves and my, and it's funny because I remember, you know, back then you don't have cell phones or anything, but my mom, she used to work on night shift at her job and she would call me. I remember the phone to the, we had a phone at, in the journalism room and the phone would like ring at 2 AM. She knew that she could reach me there. And I would just answer the phone and say, you know, it's almost like she's checking in to make sure, but she always knew I was there. It was, it was so it was, it was crazy. That's incredible. The, the only time, the only time anyone has pointed a gun at me in real life was in the Reagan journalism room. And it was, um, we were working at midnight and I mean, two cops came through the door with their guns leveled, uh, and I was standing behind the cabinet, so my arms weren't visible. And they put your hands up. It was it was terrifying, but it was just me and kids. It was a yearbook night there. Mm -hmm. So, um, but yeah, working late at the journalism room uh, nearly got me shot. Wow, you never you never expect that. I guess it is Texas though. But uh, before we move on, <laughs> we we can't not mention the first opening sequence we saw with Viet and Lisa Ling, broadcast journalist extraordinaire, um, who was a reporter for Channel One News at the time. And we mentioned Channel One News earlier, but can you guys explain like what is Channel One News? It wasn't it it was it was not in my high school. It was not part of my high school experience. Rob, you do that because he Rob ended yeah. up working for Channel One. Um, Channel One was this. Uh, television news program. It, would, it was 10 minutes of news done in sort of a hip MTV style directed for high school and middle school kids. And um, schools that signed up for it uh, would get 10 minutes of like real world news. I mean, current events in, and the editorial content of the show was really strong. And they had uh, really good young hip reporters, including Lisa Ling, Anderson Cooper uh, was a young reporter there. Uh, a couple of the reporters who are now on CBS uh, Sunday morning, uh, uh, Serena Altschul and uh, Tracy, um, can't believe I'm blanking on her name, uh, uh, Tracy Smith, um, were all reporters there. And the thing that made the show controversial is that 
it was 10 minutes of news and two minutes of Doritos commercials. <laughs> and so the people, you know, so it was a captive audience for corporate America to get two minutes of commercials in there, but it was a really well done show. Um, there were 13,000 subscriber schools when I was wow. working there. It, it was seen by millions, uh, probably about a third of teenagers uh, were watching that at the, at the time. Um, and, you know, Viet talks about me running off to Hollywood. They, they are responsible for getting me to Hollywood. Um, uh, when I was teaching them, when I was uh, advising Scope, uh, the principal came to me and said, Channel One is having a Teacher of the Year contest, and our Spanish teacher just won State Spanish Teacher of the Year. Have your kids do a video nomination for this Spanish teacher. And I said, great, they'll be great at that. And I went to the class and I said, hey, listen, gang, the principals asked us to do this thing. Um, let's get to it. And it was, I just met a wall of silence. And I had, like, they were usually gung ho and enthusiastic. And I didn't understand why this thing uh, they weren't happy to do. And what I found out much later was the reason they were unhappy to do it is because they had been secretly doing a video to nominate me nice. for channel one. And while, and they did eventually do the teacher uh, that our principal asked them to nominate. And that teacher did in fact win the channel one teacher of the year award. However, they also sent in the video of me and channel one ended up hiring me which, uh, so I went out to LA to work for Channel One, which is when I wrote my first novel. And so they got me to Hollywood. I, that was not my doing, they, they did that. Mm. Wow. That's incredible. So, but, um, and, and the ahead. thing is, uh, just to back, I mean, to explain why I was with Lisa Ling there is that um, the year, that, that year before, mm -hmm. um, Channel One actually did a, the first uh, like student produced week kind of thing, and it's submit a video, uh, you know, to be to either direct or produce or write something for for Channel One for a week, and it'll it'll be this new thing and all that stuff. And um, I actually, you know, I saw it and I was, didn't think much of it, but Rob actually was the one that said you should apply for that, and I was like, okay, I don't, you know, sure. So then I I made a video and. Um, and, and then I ended up getting chosen and I was like one of like, I think like 10 kids or whatever it was that got flown to LA and I got to speak in LA and sh shoot content for oh. Channel One and it was called Channel One Student Produce Week. And, and that's how I met, you know, Lisa Ling and, you know, and, and so, um, and then, you know, of course, while I was there, I was, you know, cr trying to get people on the show to to uh do little teasers for us for our show mm -hmm. so i yeah. brought footage yeah. home with, you kept you me. kept scope a priority because there's there's several <laughs> yes. of them in the collection of like you getting other channel one news reporters <laughs> to do like intros for the for intros just for scope mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah you know and so that's that's kind of how that's how i you know i was uh involved with channel one at first and then later on that year we made that video about rob for teacher of the year oh, too right. and he was actually a finalist i mean you know yeah. he, he just didn't win <laughs> You know, but, <laughs> but well, we'll get a look at Viet as both anchor and reporter in our next segment. Let's roll with it. Oh, God. Good morning. <laughs> Welcome to our last edition of Scope. It's <laughs> Wednesday, May 26th, and I'm Viet Nguyen. Thanks, Dave. After the pre prom formal wear fashion show last night, some volunteer students had a fashion show of their own, cowboy style. Alma Sepulveda has a story. While most students think about a job or college that they're going to go to after high school, what do teenage mothers have in store for the future? I talked to the Director of Education for Planned Parenthood in Austin, Ellen Sanchez, to find a professional view of teenage mothers. Well, unfortunately, we don't have as many success stories. The majority of, of students that drop out of high school drop out because of a pregnancy. The football team will be getting some new blood next year, along with a new coach. Two-time All-State selection linebacker Paul Harvey has enrolled in the 1993-94 school year after transferring from Oklahoma. His father had been moved to Bergstrom and the family was in town this weekend to look for a house. 
Harvey's nickname at Penn and Teller High School in Oklahoma was the hospital because that's where so many of his opponents woke up. Full speed, and the coaches get after me for going full speed, but I don't really care because uh, every play I take it 100 percent, and the guy in front of me uh, I see as my enemy. Rob, do you remember this story? This is Viet Win reporting for the scope. I do. Well, that's it from the scope. We'll see you Friday. <laughs> And that was, it, was like, I, it, was an, it was an April Fool's Day broadcast. Yeah. So it was like all of, all, all of the packages that for that broadcast were, were fake. Oh. And it was like, it was I, like camp, I, canceling on camp, off campus lunch, and that the junior prom <laughs> venue was in shambles. And <laughs> oh my gosh, I didn't remember any of that until. until yeah, I feel like I know, wasn't no able one to watch watching out. Yeah. No one, no one watching the stream was able to walk, to see Viet's reactions, which were great. <laughs> when, when, I think you you now understand eye lines for those cutaways to yourself. <laughs> like, like that's exactly what I was thinking. I was just like, oh, yeah. the eye line, dang it! <laughs> I, do, I do love the, the pivot to the second camera though, Viet. Uh, 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 and that was oh, that was. That you know, it's that, based on the, the, no... that you that you had. Do you had? Did you have two cameras, or did you like stage that? No, we had two editing. cameras. We had okay. two cameras. And I feel like you know that that shows a certain level of professionalism that you had a, a dual <laughs> camera setup for your for your recordings. But you know, I <clears throat> all I could think about is you know how like people hear their voice and they can't. They're like, I cannot stand <clears throat> hearing my voice and mm -hmm. all that stuff. And I remember like this class was the class that made me have to accept who I was. And because I, I definitely, whenever I'd watch myself, I'd be like, oh, I hate hearing myself talk and all stuff. And, you know, after you just, it's just like one of those muscles that you have to build up with yourself where you're like, all right, I guess that's how I talk. I guess, <laughs> I guess that's who I am. So, oh, but man, that, that journalist voice, man, I, it looks pretty very, good, man. Very professional. <laughs> uh, but you know, what inspired you to take Roth's class? You know, did you have an interest in journalism or was it already just media production at that point? Um, no, I, I yeah, I, I was just, it was literally just because I had experience with, with a camera at that point. I was shooting a bunch of videos of skateboarding and, you know, like, MC Hammer videos that I will never, ever, ever submit to Tammy. Um, but, you know, I would just like, make, like, you know, music videos and stuff like that. And I was already kind of doing stuff like that. And so when this class came, I was like, oh, sweet. I can, you know, learn how to do, <clears throat> um, I can learn more of this stuff. And then, you know, unfortunately, the what comes with this, I had to learn how to, like, write stories and do journalism shit, too. But, mm -hmm. you know, the, the real reason was to, like, do the, the camera stuff. And we see you on, yeah. you, Go ahead. Well, I was just, you were already in my classroom all the time. I felt like you <laughs> were a student of mine. And I think it was because your girlfriend was a yearbook editor. And, oh, right. But yeah. you were always, you were always there. Like, it felt only a slight step up when you were actually enrolled in my class. <laughs> but yeah. Get, get something out of him being in your class all the time. Yeah, yes, yes. But, and we see you on camera here, Viet. You know, did you also, I, you know, you also worked behind the scenes, I, I assume. You know, you talked about how you were doing a lot of the editing. At that yeah, point. well, you know, what's funny is that, I mean, yes, you, you, you pieced together all the stuff where I was, I was the anchor, but mm -hmm. I actually was not normally the anchor. I mean, mm -hmm. we had guys that were so good at, <laughs> At just so at, much better than Viet. <laughs> true. I mean, no, but it, 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 it's actually true. I mean, it's it, I know, but we, you know, there were like, you know, there's there was, you know, like eight or nine of us, and and I would say that you know, I was probably the last guy that would get on on there because I was always editing and shooting stuff anyway, and um, and it was just every once in a while I would get on on camera and stuff because everyone else was really good. I I mean, they were just like such naturals, and. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I, it was never my intention to um, to be like an on-camera journalist or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Were you just doing editing behind the scenes or were there were you director, sound mixer? Yeah. I mean, you know, like, uh, again, Rob introducing like titles into, mm -hmm. you know, like real life titles into the sh into our class. He, you know, he was like, well, the, the person that's going to put it all together and kind of organize the show da, 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 is called the executive producer. I remember this. I don't know if you remember all this, Rob. Mm -hmm. And then Rob was just like, so um, 
raise your hand if you don't think Viet should be the executive producer in the class. <laughs> it was just like something, something to that effect, you know? And it was just like, okay, you know? But it, but it was also just because I, it, it was all like a logistical, from a logistical mm -hmm. standpoint, I actually knew how to do basically all the equipment at that point. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. it, it, I, I, I organized it all, but you know, everybody else, they would go off and write their own stories and, and all, and I would just be the editor. I was the editor of pretty much all of it. Uh, we had a couple of other guys that were, uh, you know, that could edit as well, but I usually was the one that could, could you know, do that 1.7 second you know, record button the best. So I would just help Toggling everyone. Toggling on the VCRs. <laughs> yeah, I could help everybody piece together their stories, even though they wrote them all. I, I was just basically the editor. So, um, so yeah, I mean, I, it was just like a, from a logistical standpoint, I was, you know, the guy behind the camera just kind of doing all that stuff. Right. Well, and Rob, don't think you're getting out of this unscathed either. Because I believe, I believe oh, still cameras uh -oh. captured you too in the following segment mm. about finalizing the yearbook. Let's roll the clip. As we counted the days till spring break this week, the Spur staff stayed late hours in the journalism room, finishing the final pages of the yearbook for Deadline. Here's some clips. And we, we cut the sound here because it was like an Elton John track. We can talk, we can talk over it. Oh, look at that handsome guy. Yeah. Whoa! I was like, I was like, it's hard and I was like, yeah, there he is. But how did, how did you get into teaching, Rob? How long were you at Reagan? Um, I taught at Reagan for three years, mm -hmm. um, and I, my parents were both teachers. My mom was a high school drama teacher. My dad was a high school principal. Um, at the time in my twenties, I was playing in a rock band and I thought, well, I'll have my summers off. And, um, there were a lot, a lot of things that lined up for, for me to end up deciding to be a teacher. Um, but uh, yeah, I started out, I taught two years in San Antonio and then moved back, I really wanted to get back to Austin and uh, was thrilled to get the job at Reagan. Right. And then, so Viet was like not executive producer, he was editor, but what was your job on scope? Were you just the advisor? Were you like news director? Are you filling uh, in behind just the, the scenes? Just, just the advisor. No, I, I really wasn't filling in behind the scenes. I was making sure that there were new stories getting assigned out and getting turned back mm -hmm. in. And that's, you know, that's what the students were getting graded on. But they were really running the show. Um, truly, I, I, I did not have the technical skills to <laughs> edit video. Um, so yeah, I could, I could approve copy but they were really but, putting the show together I, but you know i mean it it's yes the, the a lot of the the technical stuff i mean the, you know we we did run and go and do all this stuff but you know the, i remember that first week two or three or i mean even the first month of that class rob actually you know taught us writing taught us about journalism taught us i remember having the whole like you know, reporting unbiased, like telling, writing an, an unbiased story and, and all those things. Those are all the things that we were being taught before we went out and did these stories. So, so it, you know, it was a very, you know, it, it was a journalism class. We, we were taught journalism. And then, um, you know, of course, by the time we were doing all of our MTV stuff, we just threw it all out the window and did whatever. But, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. but you know, like, Rob, I, you know, like the first, that first year, I mean, I remember mm -hmm. you wanted to, us to you know wear a tie like an anchor would you know and mm -hmm. we would kind of dress up and like you know we we took the job very seriously and then eventually you know we got more lax and you know i was wearing a wetsuit on you know while i was anchoring <laughs> or whatever. but you know we uh, you made us watch i remember we had to watch broadcast news i think uh you know so <laughs> right. yeah we were being to, to be clear i did edit the nudity out of it Okay, so I do want to, <laughs> or I, at least I turned the TV around for the, yeah, for the, uh, for the one offending shot in that. And, 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 you know, the other thing that, you know, yes, we're, we're talking about the broadcast journalism, but that, that all of the other class, the, you know, the newspaper and the yearbook classes that Rob was teaching were winning, like, national awards for journalism and stuff. So, you know, it, this was just a kind of an extension of, like, what you're already teaching all the kids. Mm -hmm. And, um you know, um, but yeah, I mean, we, we, we had to write actual stories and, and do journalism. 
Mm-hmm. Well, it's, I mean, you were covering some really like serious stories as we'll, and we'll watch a few of them later too. But, you know, one of the ones that we saw from your segment, um, yeah, it was like, you know, you talking about teen pregnancy, you know, serious stories. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, we, yeah, we, we, I guess, you know, we, we, we took it seriously. We, mm-hmm. we, uh, we, we were trying to like talk about things that, you know, teens were dealing with. So like, I, I think I, re- I did a story about AIDS, but I, I wanted to make sure it was a, a, from the perspective of like a, you know, a teen, you know, with HIV and, and stuff like that. So yeah, we, yeah, we were, we were, we were pretty motivated to, to try to like be journalists, like do real journalism. Mm-hmm. Well, and to get back to what we just saw, um, I found an Austin Chronicle profile of you, Rob, from 2006, where you said how hearing teenage girls on the yearbook staff talk without a filter or prepared you for writing dialogue for Veronica Mars, uh, which I can believe as someone that did yearbook in high school, <laughs> that footage really brought back memories of production mm-hmm. night for me. Um, were there any other ways that your teaching experience, both on scope or in general, influenced your career as a writer and a producer? Well, yeah, absolutely. And, and it, and it was, it was, because you're up in that classroom mm-hmm. after hours, yeah. um, as the adult in the room, you become a piece of furniture. They, <laughs> they, they stop thinking of you as any kind of authority figure mm-hmm. or you are just a piece of furniture as they do their thing. And, and I did get to hear a lot of unfiltered team voices. And the beginning of my career was writing uh, five young adult novels for Simon and Schuster. And, and so, yeah, it, it did. And not that I, you know, I was only 10 years out of high school when the first one got published. So it wasn't that foreign to me, but um, particularly hearing girls talk. Like mm-hmm. I, I sort of, I felt like I had a pretty good handle on boys. Um, and then it strangely, most of my career between Veronica and Ma- Veronica Mars and I Zombie uh, has been me writing female lead characters for for whatever reason. A lot of it is that a lot of the shows that skew male are like action or procedural and things that I'm much less interested in. Mm-hmm. But we do have a question. Sent in. Uh, someone was asking about they remember a story about homelessness. Either you remember making a package story about homelessness in Austin? Uh, yes, I, I didn't do that story, mm-hmm. but um, <clears throat> um, I don't remember a lot of, uh, I mean, I remember we did that story. I remember Mario, I think Mario is the person who went and did that story, but um, I don't remember a lot of the details from it. Um, unfortunately, high school was, you know, a couple of years ago for me, so yeah. <laughs> I don't quite remember. <laughs> But yes, I mean, yeah, that's just another yeah. example of all the stuff that we were trying to do. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't just, I remember, again, you know, it wasn't, we just, it was, a, it was like homeless teens specifically right. that we were, that, and I think he went off and, edit, I mean, uh, interviewed like homeless teens wow. on the street. So it was, yeah, it was kind of crazy. Mm-hmm. Well, we're, we're going to watch some stories next. So uh, the next few oh, segments, so the, the types of stories, the types of packages that Scope covered, and this next one comes from the May 6, 1993 broadcast. Let's roll the clip. Last Tuesday, more than 500 students piled into the auditorium to see the second annual talent show. The event was sponsored by cheerleaders in class of 94. Acts range from a hip-hop and Hawaiian dancer to a rock and roll band. Singers, however, dominated the afternoon's performance. See how much better he is? Question. (laughs) He has 100 legs and lifts 10 tons. Answer. The football team during its annual liftathon. Reporter and participant Richard Tinnen has the story. Money raised from last night's liftathon will go to renovating the weight room. Coach David Hallbrook is pleased with the turnout for the annual event. Uh, kind of shocked, really, that they got as excited as about uh, uh, the weightlifting as, as they did, but uh, it, it's pretty exciting. Junior Gerard Purchase and sophomore Eric Gromberg had the top lifts, each bench pressing 315. Football players took pledges for every pound they lifted over their previous maximum lift. 
Uh, I probably didn't do a very good job this this first year of uh, publicizing the, the liftathon and all. I think next year we what we may do is uh, try to publicize and get some bills out uh, in, in the area, and then maybe also we might do some jump rope uh, exhibition and, and make it may, uh, maybe a little more a uh, uh, little more fun. But although it was super this year. I'm Rashard Tin, pointing for the scope. A reminder to seniors, <laughs> Balfour representative Jim Anderson will hand out caps and gowns in the cafeteria during lunch today. That's it for the scope. We'll see you again on Friday. So it was, maybe it was Wednesday, Fridays. Mm -hmm. Now that I hear. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's. that's he's got the crazy. he's got the great announcer voice there. The great. <laughs> Yes. Oh, for sure, for sure. <laughs> but, yeah. So we've got, we've got a talent, show, yeah, yeah. We have a talent show, an athletic fundraiser, and that ever-present Belfort representative. You know, that's still such a high school. <laughs> um, so, so, so school events and announcements. Uh, what was the format of Scope? You know, were students pitching stories? Were you like assigning them wrong? You know, you coming up with them to assign them, or there would be certain things that I felt like we needed to do. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, and, and the kids, I, I don't think we're like, I want to do the story about the new school board policy. <laughs> like, but there was, you know, there were, you know, you had to eat, eat your meat or you couldn't have any pudding. Um, so occasionally I would say we must do this story, but a lot of it was self-generated by the, by the students. And we had another question from Elizabeth who wants to know who did the logo? Maybe you remember? Like who came up with the logo for Scope? That's a good question. Is I have no idea. Design? Yeah, I can't remember it. I can't I remember. I don't remember. I mean, I remember that we all as a class kind of decided on, you know, what it could be. We pitched ideas and all this stuff. And then we all kind of agreed that this would be the thing. But I don't remember how it came about. I'm, but I'm sure, you know, again, this is like one of the things that Rob kind of like said, let's come up with a logo and let's come up with a design or whatever. And so, um, but I, I don't, I don't even remember who, who made it or anything. But, so and, then, and then I remember like, you know, it's, it's funny hearing because it was like, we, we, we welcome to the scope. And mm -hmm. I remember like, there was like a whole like argument about whether we're called welcome to scope or the scope. Mm -hmm. And that was like a whole thing. But anyway, the high school stuff. Yeah, it's it's the Facebook all over again. <laughs> the original. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. Yes. <laughs> but and so we think, you know, broadcasting on Wednesday and Friday, so twice a week. And then how how was it broadcast? Was it like bookending Channel One News? Was it at a different time? Do you remember? Yeah. It was at the before. same time. Yeah. So, so, so basically in second period, at the beginning of second period, they would play Channel One. Uh, but on the days that we had scope, we would we would play that first which was like six or seven minutes or whatever mm -hmm. it was and then they would play channel one after that very cool well our next segment illustrates how scope reporting extended beyond reagan happenings let's roll the clip <laughs> two years ago a catastrophic event occurred that upset the equilibrium of austin's peacefulness <laughs> Equilibrium, damn. And last night, friends, family, and concerned community members commemorated the deaths of the four young girls by putting up a plaque that stands as a reminder of an event that won't be forgotten. It's affecting Austin and the community um, very tragically. We're kind of not losing hope, but kind of learning to kind of set it in the back of our minds. But still, you know, as I say, we will not forget. Although the people there lament over the victims, there was a sense of hope that renewed consciousness of the event will finally bring the criminals to justice. As the crowd slowly dissipates, laughter is actually heard in this parking lot, dissipates. which reflects the family-like atmosphere that this plaque brings. I'm Ala Sepulveda, reporting for Scope. Practic practicing those SAT vocab words. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. So that was high school student Anna Sepulveda reporting on a somber gathering commemorating the two-year anniversary of the murder of four teenage girls at a local yogurt shop in December 1991, which is probably the most well-known, you know, Austin crime story, and it's still unsolved. Actually, was Scope covering local news stories particularly often? Uh, yeah. I mean, we yeah. we would try. I mean, we 
And, you know, like, <laughs> we would show it, it, There was a, a teen angle to yeah. it. Yeah, I mean, that was key. Yeah, but, you know, we, we would show up to these places and other, other news trucks would be there and we would just use their lights. We would just, like, stand near Sorry. them. And, <laughs> <laughs> I remember that was one of the places. And, uh, yeah, so, uh, and, and then I would say Omlo specifically, too, will really like to hit the, 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 um, the, more serious topics um even though he's a punk ass skater um but yeah <laughs> he would he would uh he really liked the serious topics mm -hmm. and then Viet, you sort of got into this talking about using the local news crew lights but like how did producing on the scene reporting like this differ from you know reporting making packages for around the school you know both in terms of equipment and crew like how many how many people are, are going it was usually me and then somebody else, you know, who's talking in front of the camera and then we would just kind of like, you know, huddle together and say, okay, why don't you say this, you know, uh, and I'll record this and then we'll get a bunch of B-roll and, mm -hmm. and then we'll try to grab a, an interview somewhere. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, that, that, you know, the person that we interviewed there, she was part of a different school and we just randomly, you know, actually, I don't, we, yeah, we just said, hey, do you want to, be interviewed or whatever and then she talked and stuff so it was um and, and the other thing that rob did was he, he he made us all we all had these like media passes oh nice we just used <laughs> like he just typed up this thing where it's like Reagan media and then it was like this you know blanket statement of you know allow us to anything basically and then we, we, we laminated it with uh, those mm -hmm. student id machine over there at the school mm -hmm. and then we we carried that thing around everywhere and i you know i got to go to free football games using the the id but but it also got us into other stuff which you know i mm -hmm. know we're gonna get into talking about um uh the waco stuff but i, I, but I, I love too that you guys you guys that. had you guys had like the branded microphones too which you can see in that clip and in the, in the, <laughs> the weightlifting clip too that you have like a scope a scope logo on yeah. the microphone to make it really and that thing that thing came from the local journalist who came and talked to nice. us and you know and she just gave us one we we oh, wow. i think we either asked for it or she just like gave us one or whatever i i, I think that's where it came from yeah i mean brand identification is important um but we'll, we've been, if, we, if only she'd given us one of those wind screens for the, the microphone. <laughs> That's what we really, yeah. what we really needed. Yeah, yeah. There, was, there was that segment with, with Viet with the, the joke segment about the football player where you just really hear that wind, <laughs> really hear that wind yeah. going. Um, well, we, we've mentioned the Waco Siege segment a few times now, and that's what we have queued up next. Um, and so Onlo again is visiting Waco to report on the ongoing siege of the Branch Davidian compound. Let's roll the clip. Davidian set cult members are still holding up in their Waco compound. Our own Anlo Sepulveda went to the central Texas city to get the update. It all started last Sunday here in Waco, just down this road, when Davidian set members refused to allow federal agents to search the premises. The result was a violent shootout leaving four federal agents dead. Waco television report John McLemore and his cameraman DC Malone followed a hunch which led them to the scene just as the raid begun. They shot video footage of the incident which has been shown by all three networks and CNN. They also drove the officers to safety in their news van. Reporter John McLemore tells his story. While the shooting was going on, there was one group that was pinned down, a group of agents pinned down behind this shed, and they asked us if we could get to our truck and uh, call for ambulances. So, you know, of course, I said, you know, no problem started running to the truck and I started getting shot at and I was thinking hey man I'm with the media I don't even have a gun but who cares so they were shooting at us and I jumped in the truck a couple of bullets ricocheted off the top of the truck I just jumped in head first and said man now we're in trouble called my news director at KWTX and said look get all the ambulances you can get out here this thing is uh, broken loose and it is ugly while McLemore was getting an ambulance, his cameraman DC Malone was getting video. First 10, 15 minutes, it was the job. Get the video, get the shots. That's why I'm there. But then you start starting to see uh, agents falling and getting killed and the news unit getting hit and bullets hitting, hitting the ground at your feet and flying over your head. You begin to think, now oh, wait a minute, there's something more to this than the job. I have two small children and, and they're 
that kept going through my mind. And for the first 45 minutes, it was just constant firing. You couldn't tell if it was coming or going. As of Monday, all authorities can do is wait it out. I'm on the Sepulveda reporting for the scope in Waco. Latest reports from children who have been released indicates up to 10 cult members are dead. Someone in the comments said that Anla was the Anderson Cooper of the group. He wanted to be the Anderson <laughs> Cooper of the group. That's like absolutely mm -hmm. true. Mm -hmm. there's, there's even another another broadcast that we have on the website where he's he's pretending to be Anderson Cooper covering like oh, right. a skirmish mm -hmm. between the French club and some other student organization. <laughs> um, but well, I found that truly incredible when I first saw that because that was that aired on the March 3rd, 1993 <clears throat> broadcast. So that was only three days after the standoff started. And you know, it would go on for 51 days. Um, do either of so, you remember breaking, you know, covering this story? I, I remember I, there? I, <laughs> Rob, I know you have you have a point of view, but this is this is what I remember, and you can tell me if you remember this too. But mm -hmm. so here's the thing that so there that we had TV we had our TVs, uh, you know, in every classroom. So we often actually would just have the news on or something on, on the TV anyway, because we, uh, and so I think this was all over the news that the day the standoff started. And so we come in, we come into class and we're, you know, the, I think scope was like one of the first classes or if not the first class of the day. And I remember standing there and we were watching the story and I'm with Anlo and Anlo, Anlo, and Anlo is kind of the more, the most, like you know uh he, he's got a little bit of rebellion but he's also like super brave or you know or just naive and so he's always trying to go for the you know the big you know the most exciting thing or whatever and i remember we were standing there watching this whole thing go down and there's all these atf trucks and there's a big standoff and i turn i remember turning to online going you know wake was on only an hour and a half away and i remember <laughs> rob said if you guys are taught are thinking about skipping school to drive to Waco to do this story, I do not condone it. But here are the st here are the questions that you should ask. <laughs> oh, I hope I don't ever need another teaching job in my life. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, that I mean that sounds right. I remember all of us getting pretty excited about the notion of having a student. A high school student news show getting real coverage of that. Um, it was just an exciting challenge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. And so, no, go ahead yet. Oh, I will, I, will, I will get into how we got in there and did the whole story if you want me to. Oh, yeah. Sure. I, mean, I really like the angle that you took that it's, you know, it's, a, it's about the standoff, but it's also, you know, from the perspective of the other news people that are there covering it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, yeah. Maybe so, maybe because they were easier to talk to than an ETF agent, I assume. But right, um. <laughs> right. But you know, we we drove to Waco. We didn't even Alma and I had no idea where it was. We didn't even know where we were going. But we just drove to Waco, and uh, we kind of just followed like a you know a bunch of cars, and we just saw over here, and uh, you know, oh, there's a bunch of cars going that way. And we saw some newsman, so we saw, and there was like a there was a cop, there were a sheriff or whatever who was like stopping everyone. And letting people through or not and so we drive up in my little red crx and roll down the window and we hand him our reagan media that fast. <laughs> and he's like looks at it, he's like reagan media what's this and we're like we're like we we do high school news we cover the news for high schools and he's like high school i don't want any teenagers getting all shot up around here and he starts looking around he's looking at the car and he gives it back and he's like, and then he's like, all right, keep your head down. And then he like to wave us through. <laughs> and so we just like drove through and we like parked right next to those big news vans and all that stuff. And then um, we, the thing is, is that, the, that those news, news people who got interviewed, they were already being interviewed by CNN. Mm. And so we were standing there and we were just like, hey, can we talk to you next? And they're, and they're just like looking at us like, okay. <laughs> and so, and so we just like, you know, we just interviewed whoever, you know, the real people were interviewing. Yeah. And you so got that, your brain in microphone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we just got in there and did it. And they were just like, okay, there's these kids interviewing us on these v VHS recorders, but okay, whatever. And they just like, and then I don't even think we even asked really good questions or anything. They just, but they were, they were from the news. So they just gave us all the sound bites we ever needed. Mm-hmm. 
yeah yeah watch that i was just like i don't i don't think that this would happen anymore i was like the, the special <laughs> permissions from the school that would have been required to get rob would have been kicked to the curb yeah. <laughs> for letting you go to waco to an active standoff with federal agents um yeah but well but i'd be proud to go out that way if, if that's if that's how yeah. my career ended badge of honor mm -hmm. and someone um I'm commenting, like, wondering if there's other coverage of that event that's easily accessible. And, you know, speaking from Tammy's collection, we don't have a lot of, like, Waco Siege footage. So this is, like, so, so, and we, we don't have a lot of the footage from the yogurt shop case either. Um, so it's like, you know, Scope, Scope is filling some gaps in the Tammy collection, too. Um, but we couldn't conclude our scope watch on, on a grim note of, of sieges and, and murder. Um, instead, we will end this evening's program with a promotional spot the scope team produced advertising the Reagan student directory. Let's roll the clip. Uh, te amo mucho. I love you. Te quiero. Tu eres. Hey, Mario, what's up? How's it going, on? Pretty good. Who are you talking to another babe? Another one. Every time I see you, you're talking to a girl. Or getting a date with them. I don't know. what. what how do you do it? I'll tell you one thing. It's two things. One thing is my Rico Swiper looks. And two, student director. <laughs> student director? Whoa. You mean this has the access to any girl's you phone number? You can find all the babes you want in that book right there. Heather. I'm going to call Heather. How's it going? Amlo, how in the world did you get my number? <laughs> Student directories go on sale Monday, March 8th. Get your copy for only two bucks in the old mall before school, between 8.30 and 9. Oh. Oh Incredible. Oh. <laughs> Good stuff. <laughs> But saved in perpetuity now on texasarchive.org. Um, I, I had some pacing <laughs> issues with, with some of that uh, at the beginning. Yeah, but... could, could be a little tighter, <laughs> a little tighter. Um, <laughs> was scope the only thing that the students in your class were, were making? Because I know um, some of the other things that's in the footage that Via brought in was like public service announcements made for health class, for, like against drunk driving and smoking and all kinds yeah, of stuff. Yeah, right. We, people would come faculty members administrators would come to us if they had a video project need mm -hmm. um so we ended up doing a number of things like that there was a there was one year where they wanted to do the cheerleading tryouts on video mm -hmm. and uh, i don't think i was there i think Anla was the one that shot that but i remember him like i remember what he him just complaining because um you know, the you're supposed to just do it all live, right? But then I think the second person up messed up on something, and she's like, "Can I do that again?" And he's just like, "Oh God, we have to re we have to edit all this <laughs> together." So yeah, it's all, there's all kinds of stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But and I asked Rob a variation of this question already, but Viet, would you say that scope influenced your career in film and television production? Oh, um, oh, yeah. oh, oh, <laughs> yes. I mean, I you know. Yes, it, I was doing the technical stuff. I was, you know, I was learning about cameras and and you know all that stuff. But you know, it was it was also the class though that um, where I met Rob and Rob. You know, we would talk about. I remember like that year. Rob was like, "What do you think? Who do you think is going to win the Oscars this year?" And we would just you know talk about you know what movies you know. So we we were talking about. I think it was even it was unforgiven that year. In fact, I even remember this conversation. <laughs> but um, and then I, it was also, you know, Rob got like a one time you got a like a special screening to El Mariachi, mm -hmm. and we went and watched it together. It was just like you and I on a special in a special like screening, and then I remember having the conversation with Rob after. I was like, oh my gosh, he he spent seven thousand dollars to make this movie. That's like giving up your car to make a movie. Would I mean, would you even <laughs> do that? And Rob goes, yes, I would. 
And so th these are all the things that, you know, on a, in a young, impressionable teen would be, you know, you're mm -hmm. gathering this information and you're realizing mm -hmm. this is, these are the things that, you know, this is how you should think of you. This is what you want to do. And, and so, yeah, I mean, I, I was inspired by this class uh, and inspired by Rob and ended up going to film school. And, and then, uh, you know, after, after all that, I, you know, I became a PA on Rob's on Veronica Mars. So, you know, as I started out as an assistant. So, you know, it was, I mean, it, it wasn't just, you know, all the cameras and and editing and all that stuff, but it was also just meeting Rob. And I mean, he he gave me my first job as an assistant, as an assistant editor, as an editor, and as a director. So he might have had something to do with my <laughs> career in Hollywood. And we had we had yeah, someone just, ask Go ahead, Rob. Oh, I was just gonna say well there are you, you you meet certain students who you just know are are devoted and are going to do are going to excel in a certain field and and so as soon as Viet had his uh, UT degree, I wanted to get him out working on the show. I just had like somebody who lives it in the way Viet lived it. You just you put a lot of faith that they're mm -hmm. going to be dedicated great hardworking people and i remember when i said to the post-production supervisor on veronica mars that i had i had a somebody fresh out of film school that i wanted him to take on and 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 i could see him just deflate um and then you know a month later after v has been working there v its direct boss comes up to me and says this kid is great you know um I had every confidence he would be. Mm -hmm. okay. We had someone ask earlier, do you know if anyone else from your class went on to, to careers in media production? Well, I know Anla works for Texas State now and he works in, okay. he kind of uh, helps run that, the whole um, uh, media department over there. All the, you know, all, all the cameras and all that stuff. He's He's got a whole thing going there and he's been there for a long time. Yeah. Uh, and he, you know, he also made a movie that was in South by Southwest uh, about, you know, eight, nine, ten years ago. So, so yeah, and he does some documentaries and stuff like that. And then uh, a couple of the other guys are are have been, you know, writing stuff. And um, I think several people are watching right now. That's yeah, funny. yeah. So <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, um, David Saldana wrote co-wrote a feature from a few years ago. Humphrey Brown has been shooting some shorts and stuff and he's in Houston and stuff. So yeah, I mean, uh, it, I think, you know, we're all, everybody's still kind of doing it in, in all kinds of different capacities. Mm -hmm. Sort of a bug that got all of you. But well, to wrap up, this is the question that I ask everybody. So Viet, yeah, you saved these student broadcasts. Both you and Rob graciously agreed to chat with us about these student broadcasts. What value do either of you see in preserving student media productions like Scope? Um, I, I've been sitting here thinking about that actually. Yeah. And I was thinking about like old films you see of like the first time people play rock and roll, mm -hmm. you know, and it's, and it's like this new thing and they're not very good at it, but you can hear like, oh, that's what it, that's what it sounds like and you when you go to archive footage it's um this was the beginning and so i i sort of hope you know we we did it on two vcrs um like what you could do now with on your computer is so much better so much but that when you look at this archive of the 1990s you know student produced television newscast we were right there at the birth of it you know mm -hmm. like that's that's why I think it could have value is is seeing the beginning of a thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I I mean I will well I I should add first of all that my wife is an archivist and she's actually the reason why I even submitted it in the first place. She she's the one that knew about the Texas you know about Tammy, and um, she knew Madeline who was at mm -hmm. Tammy, and um, and you know I. You know, it's, I mean, I, that's, I think, first and foremost, my wife made me do it, but, <laughs> but I mean, you know, I mean, we, we, you watch these things and you're just like, you know, uh, 
yeah, I mean, you know, wow, I, I, I know you sent me some of the stuff to watch before, but I actually haven't seen it since then. So uh, it was just really great to see. And also, um, I also hope that it's inspiring to kind of see, see what we were doing and, um, and, and then see where, where, what it could lead to. Mm -hmm, for sure. Well, thank you, Viet. Thank you, Rob. We're so grateful that Viet shared his collection and that his wife told him to share his collection with us at our, in our audience as a contributor to the Texas Film Roundup program. And it was a special right. treat to talk to both of you tonight. But All right, you. you. This, this, was, this was really, really, really fun. It was really special. Right. Um, Thanks for putting folks, this together. Folks can tune into our next archive dive on September 22nd when Christy Carpenter will join us to watch footage starring her mother, Texas journalist and writer Liz Carpenter. If you enjoyed learning about these videos, please consider sending us a tip. We take donations via texasarchive.org slash support dash us or you can text Texas Archive to 44321. Archive Dive is made possible in part with a grant from Humanities Texas, the state affiliate of the National Endowment for the Humanities. Good night, everybody. Good night, guys. Thank you. Bye. Good night.